Hello, everyone. This is yours truly, Jimmy Williams again. You know me from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and we're going to be soon. We're launching soon on LinkedIn. Uh, I am a master mentor, coach, real estate investor, real estate coach, personal development coach. Uh, we have our own funding company. We do financing. We do a prefer prefer of things. Pardon me. Uh, that we that we all work on, and and my whole conglomerate. And uh, the most important thing that I want to bring to you today is the fact that we have some other options for you and for, for everyone that's watching if you want to buy property in different regions, specifically Africa. So I have a very special guest with me today, uh, and I want you guys to, to, to get in tune, take some time, get yourself a pen and a piece of paper today, stop whatever you're doing today, take some notes. Students, my clients, all of you who know me on Facebook and all over, take notes because a lot of times, you know, when you hear it the first time, it doesn't really become, uh, you know, it's not that effective the first time. Sometimes you have to hear something like this three or four times. I guarantee you when you hear what you're going to hear today, you're going to want to write it down so you can go back and look at it. Of course, I'm going to have the recording out there so you guys can, can replay it, but write down some notes and, and take action. Okay. Uh, his name is Ty Nichols. I'm going to give his introduction in a moment, but Ty, I just want to introduce you to my, to my Facebook audience, my Instagram audience, YouTube and Twitter. Can, can you hear and see me well? Just say yes, hello. Yes, I can. Okay, just hello. hello. Okay, awesome. Thank you, yes. sir. All right, so let's get right into this. So, guys, I, I met this gentleman about uh, a month and a half ago. I think it was right before the pandemic started getting really, really, people started really, you know, getting a little, people started really getting afraid and things started shutting down and the economy went haywire. Me and him had a discussion about Africa. And I met him, and I always tell you guys, you need to always be looking for opportunity. And I met him on, <clears throat> pardon me, on a platform on a website called blacknews.com because I'm always looking for connections. And I got this man on the phone and, and he's one of the, the most humble men I've ever met. Powerful, uh, but he has vision and he has the entrepreneur spirit. And this is our fifth episode, by the way, of it's called Revitalizing the Entrepreneur Spirit. So some of you out there, you know, your vision right now, you, it may be dormant, you know, you may be in the in-between place. You, 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 know, you could be in obscure poverty, but the Most High is giving you a great vision, and you're in the in-between place. You know, you're like stuck in the middle. You're like, what do I do? I have no money. I have nothing, but I have a vision. And uh, sometimes you have to hold on to, to what you know is in your heart. And that's the, that's the purpose of the show, to bring that side out of you, to let you know, don't give up on what the Most High put in you. It will come to pass, and uh, you will be able to fulfill it. But there's work involved. You got to keep pushing. All right? And this gentleman... At the, from what I've known about him in this short period of time, he grinds. It's hard to get him on the phone. I mean, me and him played phone tag the other day. I'm talking for hours. And he, I'm like, gosh, well, that means he's busy. Guys, if you're not busy, the Bible says a man who's, who's, who sleeps a lot, who, you know, who folds his hands, according to Proverbs, he's going to end up in poverty. So you have to stay active. But let's talk about this guy, Ty Nichols. Okay? I have a short bio here, and I'm going to read it in just a second. But as you can see on the screen, He's an international real estate investor, realtor, uh, as the entrepreneur spirit. He, he is one of the following partners with my company. He has his own company as well. I'm going to read his bio. But uh, I'm working on an African project, uh, and, and I, he's a founding partner with that. So we're going to be working together. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that you guys understand that, you know, whenever, whenever we get this over with and this pandemic is over, you know, we're going to put together, we're putting together a website right now where, you know, you'll be able to contact him. You can contact me and my team. And we're going to help you guys understand what that's all about and how to buy property in Africa is what this is really all about. And he's the guy that I met. He's the connection that I made. It's all about the connections, guys. All right? Two topics of discussion is going to be investment opportunities that's available in Africa for investors worldwide. So no matter what country you're in, uh, according to what he's telling me, you, is that correct? Can they invest anywhere in, in the whole world? They could be in, you know, South America. Can they, can they invest in African yes. property? They can? Pretty okay. much they, they, can, they can invest anywhere, but I specialize in Africa. That's correct. Okay, okay. So what, but what I'm saying is they can be living in, in another region. They could be, you know, in somewhere in Europe and still say, you know, I want to buy a property in Africa. They oh, can do most that. definitely. Most, most of my clients live outside of Africa. Oh, okay, awesome. Okay, awesome. So that's, that was my point. Uh, and secondly, I'm going to discuss, and I'm going to talk more about this because I, I feel it's, if this, is, this is not going to be one of your normal, uh, sessions with me, guys. I'm going to get a little controversial. I'm going to be talking about the return of the diaspora, which is 
you know, all, all the, 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 the tribe of Judah. And that's another whole story that was scattered in the transatlantic slave trade and in the Muslim slave trade. So we're all scattered all over the world. But, but particularly, I'm going to focus on the United States, the, Af the, the so-called African-American, which people would call me and my wife. And people. But we are actually the tribe of Judah. But there's a, there's a big migration of us going back to certain parts of Africa. Okay, in 2019, it was something called the year of return. You can go Google this up. You'll see certain nations like Ghana and Nigeria. Some of them were saying, you know, it's been, the, it's been 400 years that we've been scattered and they're giving us the, the, the right to return to come back. And a lot of people were like, well, I'm scared of Africa. Well, I'm here to tell you today, they're coming out. Some of the African people are coming out saying, you know what? Those, those Hebrews that are in America, they're not just black people. They're the chosen people. And, uh, and, and they can come back now. We, and they're admitting this publicly. So we're not talking about that totally, but that's very, very important because a lot of us here have had a bad, here's where I'm going with this, because of the media. They've given us a bad image of what Africa, all of Africa looks like. You know, you can, you can, you can easily take the bad parts of a country and just put it out there and say, you know, this is, this is what this continent is all about. I'll give you a good example. Let's say, you know, we, we captured, let's say I was in Africa and we went around the world, we had captured a group of people, brought them to our land, they served in that land and for so long, but we didn't want them to go back to the other country. So what we would do is we, we would, because we control the media, we would go out, we would make bad images. We would just show all the poor sides and, you know, the bugs in the face and, you know, you know those commercials. <laughs> I know y'all know about those commercials where you see, you know, oh, help the poor and all that. Listen, I would never show you the meat of the land. I will never show you the best parts of the land. So if we did that to, let's say Africa did that to America, you know, that would be pretty grimy because, you know, there, there's, there's bad areas here in America too. There's, there's a lot of poverty here. There's a lot in Africa, but I'm here to tell you there's, there's more good than you could ever, ever imagine. And every city that, every city that you see that I put here is a real city in Africa. I did the Googling. I did the research. I, I trust me, everything, you, all these nations here, all these different cities in different nations in Africa are legitimate and they're thriving. Some, most of them are thriving cities and uh, the, the property yes. that we're going to, yes, yes. And most Excuse of me, them, I don't mean to cut in, yes, but yes, I've right. also been to, I okay. said, I didn't mean to cut in, but I've been to those cities, so they okay. definitely exist. Really? Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just want to let people know they do exist. You know, go, go ahead, brother, go ahead, brother. So, so you're telling me, so, so everything, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing in America on the news and other places, a lot of it is, is a fraud. Would you say that? Like, they're not telling the whole story. Is that right? Well, yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's not a fraud. They do have places that's poor, like you said, just like here in the States, we got places that's poor. Right. But the only problem is all the pictures they show is poor people. Right. They don't show you the, the people that's middle class and upper class and rich yeah. people. They, they never show you those pictures. They never show you the, the, uh, yeah. the high-rise yeah. condos, you right. know, the nice ones, <laughs> the mansions. Right. Yeah. They don't show none of that stuff. Yeah, like, I've been there personally to several countries, mm -hmm. and I can let you know that all of their stuff exists, but they never show it. They never show you the subways, they right? Never show you the uh, transit buses. You know, just like here when when people go to work, the people they don't have cars. You know, they ride the transit bus. Right, right. It's the same thing in Africa. They have transit buses, but how many people know that? They have, <laughs> no. you know, trains. I mean, right. All of that stuff that you see here, they yeah. have over there, but they just never show it here. And, and let me tell you why, and, and, and because, because I can deal with this, because again. You know, I'm not, Mal I'm not proclaiming to be Malcolm or, 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 you know, or Martin Luther King, but I do deal with these issues. The reason they do that, I'm going to use a word that a lot of people know and, and they understand it. And if, to all my white brothers and sisters, if you're watching this, you, you, we have a business relationship and a, a relationship in ministry. I love you. So you understand this word. And also to the black people, the Hebrews that know what I'm, going to, what I'm talking about, because we've been living under it for 400 years. There's a word called white supremacy. Now, I don't like using that word because... Literally, there's, no, there's nothing supreme about a white person. There's nothing supreme about a black person. The only person who's supreme is the most high. So what I'm saying is under the system of white supremacy and racism, how it's established, the ideology behind it is to always show you something negative about where you came from. So if they captured us and brought us here to build a land, they never talk about that land. They never go back past the 1500s you know, with us being slaves. They always talk about we were hanging on trees. Not telling us we were royalty, that we, you know, we were the, we were a royal tribe of Judah that 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 came out of you know came out of Israel into the sub-Saharan area, the Western Africa, and, and we were regal people. You know what I mean? They never show those things because they don't want us to get the idea. You know what? Maybe we can go back and we're gonna have fun there. There's there's there, there's with with the word white supremacy, it's it's a it's a it's a tough word because 
a lot of times you hear, and I've heard this myself, my wife and I have heard people say out loud, go back to Africa. But the funny thing is, deep down inside, a lot of them don't want that because certain jobs, you know, I'm gonna talk about this COVID-19 thing in a moment, but a lot of people here are getting the COVID-19, most of those people are people of color because they do the harder jobs where they, you know, they're touching things. You know what it's I mean? Social workers, yes. Ab absolutely. So, so when they say go back to Africa, they really don't mean that. But after today, <laughs> you know what I mean? But after today, you're going to find out how, what this guy is going to be talking about, how you can, you, can, you can easily get a house for a fraction and own it for the price you would pay for an American house, whether you're living in the South or the North or wherever you're living. I'm, and guys, I've never seen anything like it. So buckle up and get ready, okay? I don't want to stay too long because we could be far on it because this man's a businessman. He's, he gets calls all the time. I don't want to hold him. But let's, let's read a little bit of his bio, but we're going to get right into this, okay? Again, his name is Ty Nichols, real estate agent, real estate inspector, and real estate appraiser, okay? So he, he, he's been in this thing a while. He is a CEO and owner and founder of African Investment Guide based in Tampa, Florida. I have a few realtors and some friends in Tampa, Florida that I want to connect you with as well. I've been, I've been thinking about it. Uh, the quality of service given by Ty has brought, has brought about recognition to, to the company. Okay, and I, I said that wrong. I meant to say the high quality of service given by Ty has brought recognition to the company, which has been in existence and providing customer satisfaction for over the last 10 years. So he's not a novice at this. He knows what he's doing. It's part two of that. Ty's particular areas of proficiency includes, but are not limited to, financial restructuring, sales contract management, and investment planning. His extensive, pardon me, his extensive knowledge in the real estate business consistently more than, consistently more than meets the client's expectations and makes him a valuable and integral part of the company. He graduated from the professional, I said that wrong, he graduated from the professional Tampa School of Real Estate. I said, I said it right, actually. I, I was going to say you are a professional from the, <laughs> from the School of Real Estate. So, so he graduated from, from, did I say that right? The yes, professional, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. I want to make sure I say things correctly. So he graduated from the professional Tampa School of Real Estate. All right, so he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. And what I want you to do, sir, let's just go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, go into some, you know, Start where you want to start. Again, these people, are, the, my audience, again, are the, a lot of them, they want to talk to a real person. Uh, even though I have on a suit, I'm very approachable. You know what I mean? You can be, they just want to make sure they're dealing with a real person and tell your story leading up to where you are right now. And then we'll get into how they're, we're going to be able to help them get property in Africa. Okay. Once again, my name is Ty Nichols. I'm the owner of Africa Investment Guide here in Tampa, Florida. And I'm a real estate agent. I was a home inspector. I used to inspect homes for USAA um, homeowners insurance. And I'm also a real estate appraiser. Now I got into this business totally by accident. What happened was I had went to Africa on vacation. I went to Ghana and Togo. This was about 12 years ago. So I went to, to Ghana and I went to Togo strictly for fun, right? I didn't have nothing else in mind. Okay. But when I got there, the first thing I noticed was how relaxed it was, how calm it was how friendly the people were. And, you know, I just fell in love with the place. So I said, well, I think I'm just going to buy a piece of land and who knows when I retire, I can, I can move here or at least if nothing else, I can go back and forth between the States and uh, mm -hmm. Africa. So I bought a piece of land in uh, Togo and I would say like two years after I bought the land. By the way, this land was close to the beach. It was within walking distance to the beach. And I only paid five hundred dollars. Now, where in the where in the states can you buy a piece of land for five hundred bucks? Five hundred dollars. Say that again, because yes. because I'm because listen, beach beachfront <laughs> property here in Fort Lauderdale in Miami, because I, I I used to live down there. It's uh, astronomical. Did you say yeah. five hundred dollars and you actually own 500 it? Five hundred. Okay. To own it. <laughs> okay. And also, wow. too, they don't they don't. You know, on top of that, they don't pay property taxes either over there. Well, I should say most countries they don't pay property tax. Okay. So once you buy, you own it. Wow. But anyway, I purchased this piece of land, and then about two years later, a hotel was built right beside the piece of land I had bought. So automatically, my land is already was already going up to begin with, but wow. now it's really going up because the hotel is beside it. And then other people started buying houses around it. So mm -hmm. what used to be like out in the country is now part of the city because the city is like growing so fast. 
But at the same time, my property is just going up. So I paid 500 for it, like I said, but now it's worth well over 50000 Really? So that's I, when I, <laughs> wow. Excuse me? No, I was like, really? Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's when I decided. I said, well, shoot, I need to turn this into a business. I mean, because, you know, you can just purchase land so easily mm -hmm. and just flip it. You know, basically what they, what they say, you can flip it. Or if you want, you can buy the land and build a home on I mean, it's totally up to you. Everything is like wide open. So wow. that's how I decided to get into this business. <laughs> I bet people out there going, is this guy telling the truth? Is this real? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, it's real. Uh, to tell you the truth, a lot of people say, oh, it's a scam, it's a scam. The reason why it's a scam is because people in this country are just so used to being ripped off and overpaying for everything. But yeah. No, it's not like that. Yeah, it's not like that all over the world. It's only <laughs> when, when certain people <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, purchase the land. That's when all of a sudden everything just goes through the roof. But uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's really, everything is really within your budget. Wow. Wow. Well, let me ask you this, because I know people are probably asking, and I ask you this too. Sure. West Africa and North Africa, South Africa, all of that, because they're, they're different countries, are, can they yes. purchase in any one of those areas? And, and if, we, we, if somebody came to us and said, hey, I want something in Kenya, can we, can we find something for them? Yes. Well, mostly I would say Sub-Saharan Africa, because I really okay. don't go too much up north. Okay. But... Six main countries I deal with are Ghana, mm -hmm. Togo, Gambia, Kenya, Tanzania, okay. Okay. and Rwanda. Yes. Okay. Okay, good, good. And so, all right, so, I, and, I, and I like what you said because, you know, there, there are certain areas where, you know, I, I definitely, because we got to talk about the tension here in this country. With all the drama that's going on, there's a lot of tension. I, I don't want to move to another place, another area, and still have all, have all the tension. You said something very important. You felt peaceful mm -hmm. there. Yes. How do they treat you so, there? As soon as you get off the plane, as soon as you get off the plane, you're going to feel, well, for me anyway, as mm -hmm. soon as I got off the plane, I just felt peace and calm. I'm like, wow, this is weird, you know? It's really? Like, I felt like I was at home, and I had never been there before. This was like my first time there, and I feel like I'm at home. And it was just like, I can't, <laughs> you, know, you can't explain it. You have to actually go there to really? just feel the peace. And the people there are just friendly. You know, everybody looks out to each other. <laughs> they really bring that. What's that saying they always say? It takes a village to raise a child. Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah, but no, anyway, you're right. People actually, yeah, the people actually look out for each other. You know, really? it's, it's, yeah, it's nothing like what we do over here. <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, and, and, and you know, and, and that's, that's, again, that's one of the reasons my wife and I did, got into this business because we've, we've always wanted to, we want to help people. Okay. Yes. We know some people are not, you know, they're not built to be entrepreneurs. Everybody's not built for that. But there are ways for them to, to, to build their credit up, make money with their job, save their money, invest it, even if they have a job, but they have to be able to invest wisely and, and to be able to, and, and I tell them the end goal is to own property, stop renting and own things so you don't have debt. And you know what I mean? Even without being a millionaire, you, you're telling me you don't have to be a millionaire. You know what I mean? You, you, can, you, can, you can save some money, go buy some land, and that land is gonna build value and you're not paying property tax. That's a very, very powerful statement because in this country, they're making a ton of money on. I, you know, I was working with somebody the other day from Baltimore, Maryland. They bought a piece of property uh -huh. for $100,000 about 10 years ago. The yes. property depreciated because of the taxes. Something happened with the, with the area, and they kept the property taxes. That property's worth $47,000. So she's, she's upside down over 50 grand. You know what I mean? And so, and so, and, and, and she's, she's working two or three jobs and she'll never be able to catch up with that property yeah. unless something happens to the market and it turns once, dramatically. Once it goes upside down, it's, it's pretty much a wrap. It's a wrap. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's slim. The chance of her getting out of there is very slim. You know, oh my so. gosh. Wow. Well, thanks for letting everybody know that because, because I have some young, again, I, I, when, when you're mentoring people, sometimes they want to hear it from more than just the mentor, believe it or not. It's, it's almost as if you, you know, you raise with your mom, uh, you see your mom every day. She tells you, don't do this, don't do that. But it's not yes. until the next door mom or the next or the, somebody on the outside, you know, something happens out there in the street and they say, well, I told that person, I, they'll listen, they'll take that person's word over yes. your mom who said the same thing, right? And, that's, yes, and exactly. it's the same thing in, the, in this situation. So thanks for telling that. So let, let's get sure. right into this, okay? Um, okay. We, we did talk about certain areas. I'm going to go to the next page here. Uh, and... And I've been, I've been doing some other due diligence. I've been, I've been looking around some other places, some other people that do what you do, but they don't, they, they don't do it the way you do it. But um, 
some of the areas that, that, that I saw, and you mentioned some of these areas too, um, Tanzania, uh, I, yeah. you didn't say Ivory Coast, uh, Ethiopia, no. Nigeria, Nairobi, Kenya. Um, ten, I'm no, not, I did do Kenya. Yeah. I did Kenya. You did? Okay, pardon me. Yeah, you said Kenya. Uh, yeah. Tunisia, that's it right, Tunisia, uh, Botswana, Tun yeah. Tunisia and Botswana. Botswana, okay. And, uh, and South Africa, several places in South Africa. But, but, mm -hmm. but mostly what, what you said earlier, and, and guys rewind that, that's what we have available now. I'm looking at some other things, but, but primarily Ty Nichols is the, is the main guy that we want to work with right now. I just wanted to show you that, you know, you don't have to be in one area. Uh, now, you did mention something about that area, Gambia. That's on West Africa, and that's more on the beach. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and that's that's more like uh, is that more like a uh, like a like a you know Fort Lauderdale or something like that? It's more like a beach city area, or is it just just a beach? No, the Gambia is a country. Gambia is a country, right? Okay. Yeah, but you but, but they you, do have beach areas where you can you know you can buy homes on the beach. But yeah, no, yeah. I bought my land in Togo, the country of Togo, which is right beside Ghana. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I just wanted to clarify that because because when you did say it to me the first time when you said Gambia, I knew it was a country, but I'm thinking. What part of the yeah. area? So, so you so you can buy in the city, or you can buy by the beach. Yeah, anywhere in the whole country of, of mm -hmm. the Gambia, you can purchase land, and okay. the land also in, in the Gambia is, is not expensive, at okay. least not right now. So, okay, you know, of course, the sooner you purchase, the better because prices are going to go up. Okay, so so and, and anybody who's in real estate understands that. You, yes. you guys know all my students. You you buy now, ask questions later, especially with what's going on now. You know, buy, buy everything now and, and wait and, and see and see the property value go up. You, you miss around, you wait, that same piece of property is going to be worth thousands of dollars and then you'd be like, oh man, that's not in my budget. You should have bought when it was 500 bucks, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is what I want to talk about really, really quick here. Um, that diaspora, I want to talk about that later, but I want to talk about, uh, what I, I'm missing in here. Hold on. Here it is. Okay. So, I want to talk about the investing side of it, what, what's available to them. Uh, you, me and you have this conversation, and I want I want to go over it with them. Uh, these are the these are the, separate, the the different things that they could do uh, in in Africa. The, the investment opportunities. So first, I want to talk about the construct new construction homes starting at fifty thousand dollars. Now, now when you told me this, and, and this is guys again, you're going to go through my company to, when we all put this together to work with me and me and uh, Mr. Nichols here. But when he told me you can buy a property, a pre construction home. For fifty thousand dollars, yeah, three bedroom, two uh -huh. bath, okay, uh, tile floor, granite countertops, and also it's in a gated community. <laughs> wow, where are you going to find that here in the U.S.? Where? <laughs> <laughs> gated community, three Maybe bedroom, two know. bath. Yeah, so 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 now now pre construction or 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 can, can, when they buy it, is there is, are there some already up for them or? Is it going to be oh, pre construction? Yes. Okay. No, this, this other house is there. It's not just going to be one house. It's a subdivision. That's yeah, yeah, I yeah. Yes. Okay, but but I guess I'm, I'm, I didn't ask the question right. When they when they when they make the fifty thousand dollar investment, do they have to wait to have their home built, or can they buy one that's already built that's new already there? Yes, that's my question. Exactly. They yes. can. Okay. Yes. So okay, so so I was under the impression that, that everything's pre construction and that kind of thing. So what he's saying is, you could get a brand new home that nobody's ever lived in. And you just yes, pay fifty thousand exactly. dollars for it, right? Yes. Now, before before I go to the next one, um, you were telling me that with these properties, you you can't really finance them. Is that right? Are these all cash deals? That's the only downside. Is the majority? I mean, they have some builders, of course, that will okay. let you finance. But okay, I would say well over eighty percent they want their cash up front because that's how people live in Africa. Uh, everybody pays cash for stuff. They don't they don't get loans and just pay. Okay. Okay. You know, 30 years or 20 years, they pay everything cash. Or if they can't afford to pay cash, what they'll do is they'll do a little bit each month. You know, they'll do like, for instance, the foundation one month. Yeah, and then the yeah. Next month, you know, they'll okay. do the walls and then, you know, like that. It's pay as you go, basically, as they say. So <laughs> okay. Yeah. So people in Africa are living debt free. They don't have debt like we do here. I love it. I love to hear that. And, and, and in spite of all the stuff that's going on with China, which is another conversation, uh, you know, the, we hear that they're going and trying to take over and, and why does everybody want to go to Africa? Why, why is that? Why are they trying to go? I think it has something to do with the, the, the rich resources that are there. Resources, but, but, exactly. You know what Africa I mean? Africa so, has everything. Africa, as a matter of fact, Africa is the only place in the world yeah. that has everything. No other place in the world has everything except Africa. Let's say, okay, and let me just go on Google and see that. <laughs> did, you, did you guys hear that? 
no other place on the planet, not even the big bad U.S. Because you know, on the news you hear that we're we are the we're the mightiest nation of all time, and you know we're the greatest. When it comes to resources and everything that you need, it's in Africa. That's why it's been people have come in and colonized and trying to recolonize and all that. Yeah, America's in there too. America's in. Say that again. Yeah. America's in Africa too. They try to act like they're not, but of course, America. Yeah. Especially France, Europe. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. Russia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, China, I mean, they're all in Africa because Africa, like I said, is the only place in the world that has everything. Absolutely. You know, people say there's nothing in Africa, while at the same time they're holding a cell phone, which the materials to make their cell phone came, came from, from Africa. Africa. <laughs> yes, you're yes. Like, well, you said nothing in Africa, but you're holding Africa in your hand while you're saying it. You know? Absolutely. In fact, you have a cell phone if it wasn't no Africa. Yeah, and let me just throw this out there. This is a very important piece of information that really blew my mind. Because, you know, sometimes you hear trolls, and we, we may have some trolls that jump on here and get mad and say, well, you know, black people didn't invent anything, nothing came out of Africa. Well, a black man who was an African man invented the, the, the internet. And, yeah. and another black man with the major technology from a cell phone helped invent those two. So can you imagine, pick up your phone, black man has something to do with that, and the internet came from an African man. Okay, so that so the, you know, and the products yeah, to make yeah. that cell phone came from Africa too. <laughs> oh, like that's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the, yeah. the materials came from Africa. Yes. Do, do you know? Do you know something else that, that I find interesting? And and this has come from several people who are intelligent now, because this show is for intelligent people. Uh, I, I'm not telling anybody they don't, they can't watch it. Whether you're white or black, you have to open up your mind. You can't be closed minded to be on this show. It's going to offend you. You're going to get mad. You're going to you may call us racist or whatever, but we we don't really care because we know who we are. Okay. But uh, several people have said that, and it's been proven over the, they're saying in the next 150 years, I'm talking top fashion designers, and one guy, you might have heard this guy, he passed away in a plane crash, very popular preacher, his name was, uh, um, he, was from, he was from the Bahamas, I can't think of his name right now, um, Oh God! I know who you're talking about, though. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't remember his name either, but I know the guy you're talking about. Uh, let's... Uh, Miles Monroe, Miles Monroe. Yeah, because he has a lot of videos online. Yeah, he does, he does. He said, he said this right before he passed. He said, he said the most high showed him. And he, and he said, he's been to Africa. He said, the, he said, West Africa and certain parts of Africa is the future when it comes to economics and everything. He said, he said the, the Western world is slowly falling, but Africa is in, is in position. The, next, the trajectory over the next 200 years is going to be, that's going to be the place to be. Uh, and that's where everything's going to be surrounding. Um, Oswald right. Boateng, I'm sorry, you're going to say something? Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to sure. say, I was just watching a, a video this morning that was saying yeah. that uh, Ethiopia had the world's fastest growing economy before this coronavirus hit. So now things have slowed down <laughs> a little bit. But their economy wow. Was, wow. was the really? world's fastest. Yes. And you, you don't hear that in the news. And I'm going to talk, and I'm, oh, wow, that was really, really good. At the end, I'm going to talk about the fastest growing country statistically. I'm going to show you something here, and it's going to blow your mind, and it's in Africa. But the second person, yes. this, this guy's a very, very successful, um, he's a fashion designer. His name is Oswald Boateng. He's one, of, he's one of the first black men that actually had his own shop in a specific part of England, okay? Very, very successful. Look up that name, Oswald Boateng, okay? He said fashion, the fashion capital, the, the, it's heading, he said the next 100, 200 years is going to be dominated by Africa. This is what he said, Okay. And uh, I'm like, man, this guy, he's a very intelligent guy. He's been all over. And so what that tells me is there's a lot in Africa that we haven't, we, we, we're just touching the surface. But I like what you said about the whole thing with debt. Now, I got to ask this question. With that property for 50000 when we when they buy it, what about the water? Do they have to dig their own well or does that come with it? Well, that, well you have to pay for it, of course, but that comes done. with okay. it. Yeah, okay. you have, you, yeah they, have, they have what they call a borehole. Okay. Where, you, where they drill into the ground, so you, your water is free. Okay. Once okay. they hook it up to your house, you get free water. So that's also included, basically. Okay. Okay. Because I'm saying that because my, my grandfather, you know, here in the U.S., uh, I'd always tell this story. He had tons of kids, you know, 17 kids, <laughs> and he had a second grade yeah. education. But he built this machine where it would go down over 100 feet in the ground and, and find running water. He would pull that water yes. out of the ground, hook a pump up to it, and, and he got free water. It is he did it with his house and several other yes. houses. So you so never. The houses, yeah, the house, yeah okay. the houses come with. For water. Okay. And so yes, the water is free. The only thing you have to really worry about is your water. I'm sorry, your electricity. Okay. And internet. Okay. So those would be like your main expenses. That's fantastic. That's fa no property tax. No. <laughs> wow, man, I, I I can't get that out of my head. Wow. So 
again, guys, for a fifty thousand dollar investment, and of course, you could probably pay more if you want a bigger house and all that. Yes, of course, you can get a mansion if you want to. You get a mansion, okay? Now, 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 the average, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, we do we do have properties here. We have we have properties that you could say it's just like a mansion for like a half a million dollars. That same property in Los Angeles or let's say New York, it's not New York, let's say Fort Lauderdale would be $15 million. So for 500,000 here, you can get a pretty big house. But, but what are we talking to get to see six or seven bedroom house, something like that in Africa, what are we talking? Well, that, that's kind of a hard question because of course okay. that depends on the country, the local, yeah. you know, with real estate, everything is location, location, location. It, it is, it is, it is, exactly. Just so like that here. depends on the city, the country, okay. uh, the area, like if you're close to the water or if you're up in the mountains, if you're okay. in the country. Okay. So if I was just to round off a, a, a number, mm -hmm. I'm just rounding something off. Like I said, I would say maybe two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and that makes perfect sense because, like I said, in Atlanta, you know, this because of the area where it is, it's it's yes. it's, it's 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 the outskirts of it. It's not. It's, it's a lot of people here, but because yes. of the area where it is, it's not close to water and things like that. So it's a lot cheaper, but you live better. But again, it's not like what we talk about in Africa. So you're talking no. half of what it would cost to have a mansion there, which is great. So on to the next yeah. one here. I want to talk about the bed and breakfast. Uh, some of you investors out there, you want passive income. You want to put your money into something. And, and investors who have been doing this, you guys know what I'm talking about. You want to put your money into something and just, you know what, let it, let it, let it marinate. Let, it make, let money make money. Let, let that money become your servant. You know? And uh, the bed and breakfast passive income investment, I thought was very powerful. It was interesting. When I heard about it, I'll let him tell you about it. And it starts at fifteen thousand dollar investment. So wh how does that work? Well, actually, it starts at nine thousand. Oh, nine thousand. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, okay. And well, that's if you. Well, if you're gonna. Well, let me go back. If yeah. you're gonna join in with somebody else, it's right. nine thousand. Like, say, for instance, yeah, because I know everybody don't have like twenty thousand yeah. or thirty thousand they can just throw down. So what we also do yeah. is we bring people together. We'll bring, uh, like, say, for instance, three or four people together. Okay, and they'll put down like eight or nine thousand dollars and you can purchase it together like that but you also gotcha. have to split the income you know three or four ways but still okay. you got the problem okay so okay all right would you now, to say something yeah well what i was going to say is with, with those when you buy them they're already existing and there's already people in yes. them is that right okay yes so, so, yes. so okay so it's like so, so basically you're buying it to a system that already makes money and you're not worrying about how to actually build it up and go find the workers and all that. It's just residual income, no. right? I mean, you can, we can do that for you as well. Like if, okay. say, for instance, if you want to buy a property yeah. and you want to be the, the sole owner, and let's yeah. say, for example, hey, I want to buy a bed and breakfast in Rwanda, mm -hmm. you know, because Rwanda is really going up. Okay. So we can help you to, to buy the property as well as help you set it up as far as getting the workers and, Okay. You know, getting, putting everything in place for you. So we do that as well. We help people to get, you know, their business started, you know, off the ground. Okay. So you don't have to buy something already put together. We can start from scratch and also do it as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Another big question. Sure. Some of the, some of them, the, some of the concerns were, okay, Jimmy, when I get this property, can I, is there any way I can go to Africa to, to, to be there, to be a part of the closing? Can I see what's going on or, you know, how would that, how would that work? Yes. Uh, just like here in the States, when, okay. like, say, for instance, the, the date uh, comes for, I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say your closing date was the 25th of May. Then you would just come to Africa and you would sit down with the lawyers, you know, and mm -hmm. just fill out the paperwork, okay. you know, sign the contract, just like you would here. So everything is exactly the same. Okay. So so you guys hear that. It's very professionally done. There's, there's, no, there's no, you know, because, you know, you, I'm pretty sure you've been hearing about the Nigerian scam and, you know, yes. all these, uh, you know what I mean? And I think that's overrated because it's just, you know, it's, I think they blow it out of proportion. But, but, but you could smell a real scam a f far away. You could smell it. But th this is, guys, he's saying that whenever the property is ready, when you, the closing, you make arrangements to be there to sign the paperwork. Okay, there's attorneys there. You sign with the attorneys, huh? exactly. That's yes. fantastic. That's fantastic. And you, and you get you get all your paperwork there, and you can actually. Um, let me ask you this also: If a person is not a citizen, how would that affect? Do they need to become a citizen or get a visa to be able to come back and stay? How how would that work? Well, you don't have to be a citizen to, to own land in another okay. country. I mean, of course, that would be nice, but you don't. Yeah. Most of the people that I work with right now, they're not citizens. They're just, you know, they're just okay, investors. Yeah, because you can always come back and forth. They give you know a visa so you can come back and forth. So okay. That's not a problem. Okay, that's a very big one because again, I got again, I got a lot of guys 
and men and women that they want property in different places, but they don't want to live there. They want to stay here in the States. They just want to uh, make money. Know, okay. Yeah, you can just, like I said, for example, what we was talking about earlier about the, uh, mm -hmm. the bed and breakfast. Yeah. You, know, you can buy the bed and breakfast there because we manage the properties for you. Okay. So you can purchase the bed and breakfast and we'll mm -hmm. do the management for you and just send you your money every month. Oh, wow. Or if you want, I, or, or if you want, you can come there, like I said, and mm -hmm. just do it yourself. Either way, we can right. do it for you or you can do it yourself. Ty, you know what? When I first heard you talk about this, I was like, sign me up. Sign me up. I'm ready to go, man. It's just, I mean, because it's, it's unheard of. It's, it, it really is. In this country, something like that, to, to, to be even be a part of, to be a, you know, a, a small shareholder in an investment like that, you're talking, you know, sometimes they want one and two million dollars on those kind of, I'm serious, man. You know, anything less than that, they don't even want to talk to you. Okay. So th this, yeah, is, exactly. this is virtually unheard of. Yeah. So beach fund properties, uh, vacant properties, vacant land, um, and you guys see the prices. And these, this is the, these are the prices that we, that we, you know, that we, we're working on right now. We don't have the website up yet, but uh, probably within the next two days, I'm going to have a link you guys can click on, and then you'll be able to go on there and say, hey, Jimmy, I'm interested in that particular program. But with, with the vacant land um, and beachfront property, when, when they buy that land, um, some of it's just like, like it is here. Some of it's going to have trees on it and all that. They got to do their own gutting the land and all that stuff. Is that right? Well, it, like I said, it depends yeah. on where you're at because most of the, the land mm -hmm. in Africa is, is, even though I know when you look at pictures of Africa, they always treat like some place that look like the moon with no trees and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but actually, yeah. in reality, most of, most, at least the places where I've been in Africa, most of the uh, land is real lush and <laughs> yeah. tropical. So it's going to be, I'm quite sure it's going to be land on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I'm quite sure it's going to be vegetation on it. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. I mean, they just have palm trees and all different type of uh, plants. And yeah, it's going to be something on the land. That's More than right. likely, you're going to have to clear the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that, and that's the power of programming. Like, you see something on television, they automatically assume. And so, guys, we have a man who goes there, who has property there, who lives there. He's telling you when you buy over there, they, they, you know, it's going to have some vegetation on it. And, uh, and that's another good point. A lot of us, you know, we, we, even though we, think we have Whole Foods here, who's, which, which, by the way, is extremely expensive. A lot of people can't afford to go to Whole Foods to get natural, you know, the, what they're, they're saying, produce. But in, in Africa, you know, you can grow this, you can grow your own veggies. You know, you can do it here in the States, but I'm just saying, that's a, that's, that's color, a, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, and the colors don't even look the same. The colors over there are so much brighter and prettier. Really? Really? Because I saw, you know, when I was there, I saw people farming, and I was looking at the vegetables, and I'm like, look how... Even the vegetables are different over there. Because, you know, yeah. they don't use all these, uh, what do they call it, GMOs and all yeah. that stuff. So yeah. everything is fresh and everything is real and the colors are just beautiful. Oh, my gosh. And, and you know what it is? I believe it's, it's, the, it's the soil. You're right. You're not using the yes. GMOs and the natural sunlight and, and the climate's a little bit different. I like that. So, so I don't have to worry about yes. e e eating, you know, uh, an orange that's been shot up with something. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Not even an orange anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And what's scary is, even though Whole Foods and those places are out there, I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I'm just saying, you really don't know because you weren't there when they grew it. Well, my grandfather used to grow a lot of his own crops. And so, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't have the gold nowhere to buy watermelon and, and you know, corn and sugar cane and bees. He, he, you know, he, he had so much land, he harvested that land. He got us together. He made us go out there and harvest it a lot of times. Had his own tobacco barn. And I knew it was fresh. I knew it wasn't going to hurt me. But I'm afraid. I'm, yeah. A lot of people are afraid to go buy stuff from the store, even if they say it's, you know, it's supposed to be organic. You know, so, so yeah. that's, that's another good benefit about Africa. Uh, you know, that's you awesome. You still have to worry about the pesticides here, too. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, in this country. Yeah, you still have to worry about the pesticides. <laughs> yeah, in this country. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, they, they, they put like a ton of pesticides. So even if the food is good, you still yeah. have the poisonous pesticides to worry about. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they try to conserve it. They put, they'll spray something, you know. It's just interesting. So it's a totally different way of life, guys. And, 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 yes. and listen, it, it really is. I mean, because when you, when you and I talk, we didn't get into any of this. That's why I'm glad I had you on the show. You, you, man, this is a side. I thought you were an introvert. You're, you're an extrovert, man. You know, you're like spilling the beans here. I mean, I'm going to have people calling me yeah. saying, Jimmy, it's, it's half of what he said is true. Yes, it is. 100% All of it, 100 is, true. is true. Exactly. Okay, now, yes. let, let's, because I, I know you got to go. I, I want to keep another 10 or 15 minutes, and I want to talk about a couple more things. Okay. Uh, the beginner's passive investment, uh, passive income system, what does that mean? Do they actually, they can just start investing some of their money and what where's that money going to go to and they can start making passive mu passive income and how long is that going to take well, for, they, for them if they start at let's say 500 bucks 
Okay, well, that would go, if you don't want to invest 500 bucks, yeah. uh, I will put that into the vacant land program we have. Gotcha. And Because basically what that is, is I, I group together, like, say, for mm -hmm. example, 10 investors. Okay. And I try to buy as much land as I can. Okay. You know, because like I said, we flip land. We have buy and we hold it, say, for example, six okay. months. Okay. Flip it, and we'll either get a bigger property or just take the money and then split the money between the investors. Gotcha. But normally what we do is we try to just keep buying bigger and bigger properties like that okay. so they can get a bigger return. Oh, that's so fantastic. That's, that's what we do for, you know, for the $500 range. You know, we got different programs with different wow. price range, but for yeah. the $500 range, that's what we would do. <laughs> Man, that's pretty cool. And you, you're just saying basically because I'm in, the, I'm in the States and I say, hey, you know, listen, here, here's, here's $5,000 take that money and make it grow. And you guys do all the stuff behind the scenes. You're going to update me and let me know as the investor, as my money is growing, as my you know, investments grow. Is that right? Yeah, we send out a statement every, uh, every three months, quarterly. Oh, that's so fantastic. Every three months, mm -hmm. Yeah, every three months, you would know how your money is growing. And also, too, we uh, have a, a refund policy. Okay. So like, say, for instance, we give a 90-day refund policy. So if you get into the, the program, you say, well, this is not really for me. Well, we just give you your money back. I like that. I like that. Students, clients, uh, followers, did y'all hear that? Critical thinkers, you get your money back, okay? And 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 and, and don't try it with Merle Lynch. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Oh my gosh! Was, and they've been around for many, many years, and, and their policies exactly. are different. You know, and they, they okay. just don't care. Ninety days is that's mm -hmm. that's 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 plenty of time to think about it. You know, exactly. you, you, you know that's that's fantastic, man. You didn't tell. And again, all this stuff you didn't tell me over the phone, so. I'm glad my students. Yeah, but we talk briefly on the phone. So I know, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Last but not least, <clears throat> because I want to talk about one more, one other topic after this, and we'll be done. But okay. charter school investments, because I, I I have a couple that's in Dallas, Texas, powerful couple. They've been in education for over 30 years, and uh, you know they said, Jimmy, listen, you you know you and your wife are big on wanting to give back to the community, and uh, and, and this is no shade to any other community, but the African American community has had the poorest schooling system on the planet in this country, I, I think, okay? So, so she was telling me, she said, she said, she said being a black teacher in, in, the, in that system, she said that, you know, a lot of the white teachers were telling them that they know how to teach black students better than they can. And I, and I said to her, oh, that's interesting because, and I told, I told my student, one of my students says, I said, I'll never know what it's like to be white. And you'll never know what it's like to be black. But I'm of the I'm of the I'm of the mindset and, and the mentality of, you know, who better knows my community than people that look like me. So so exactly. and she told me, she said, Jimmy, I've had a hard time with the school system. Because how can they how can they know more about young black inner city kids or where, where they're from more than somebody who was like them, who came up like them? And so again, that's where that institutional racism came in and the white, you know, white supremacy, or I call it white ideology came in to come in and teach our students and, and you know and and they're not by the time they're 15 or 16 they're, they're not they don't know what they should know because you know they don't have the patience to, to, with them they don't really know them the same way so she came to me and said you know what we need to start some type of charter school system here in the u.s and she said you know it's not a hard system and i was telling her well i met a guy in africa i think we should do this overseas as well well we know africa has a lot more you know people of color you know it's 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 not like it's a majority you know like here it's majority you know, white and other groups, right? And, but over there is more yes. black people. But still, I think the yes. charter school investment program is, is, is powerful. Now, as an investor, um, you know, when they, when, they, when they make that investment, do they have to worry about who's going to build the school and all that and getting the students and all of that stuff? How would that work? No. Okay. No, we, we take care of all, all of the stuff. Like you said, all the background stuff, we take care of all of that. Okay. So the only thing they have to worry about is just you know getting their monthly income uh, from the, okay. the purchase. I mean, of course, you know, you can let them know what's going on along the way. Right. But their main thing is, is just to sit back and collect their check. Just like, for instance, like I said earlier, if you uh -huh. uh, invest with, um, I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. Fundrise or Merrill Lynch or something I've heard like of that. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're gonna sit, yeah, they're not going to sit beside you and, and go over every little oh, single no. thing with you. Oh, no. Yeah, they're, they're just going to give you. Yeah, they're just gonna give you your, your money every month. <laughs> or not give it to you, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, wow. Sorry, you lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <We're wiped up. laughs> but no, but seriously, uh, no, we don't tell you every little single step. That's going. Of course, if you have questions, we'll answer all of your questions. Okay. We'll show you pictures. Like I said, if you want to, you can come over and sign the contracts. But okay. We handle most of the work for you, and you just collect your check every month. That's fantastic. So investors, no matter who you are, what country you're from, you just heard the man. You invest, you get a return on your investment, which is good for me. I have a personal question because me and my wife, again, we, we, you know, we, we set a vision out. We want to help millions of people, especially millions of children, okay? Particularly in this case, within the context, black children learn certain things while they're in school. So let's say, and the main, one of the main things that I'm big on is teaching young people entrepreneurship, how to take their, you know, how to develop a craft or something by the time they're maybe 12 or 13 years old and develop the, the entrepreneur mindset to say, you know what, I don't want to go up and just grow up and get a job. I want to be able to create jobs and have, you know, I have the entrepreneur spirit. I, I can go out and be self-employed. I always say, guys, if you have an LLC, your business is not doing well, you're self-employed, but you're just still, but you're still employed. And it's a good mindset, even though you may be struggling. So my wife and I, we, in our heart, we really want to, we really want to, Add that to the curriculum. If we if we ever start investing into something like this, then we're going to do it really soon. But we, number one, we want to make sure that they get good education on their history the right way, proper history. Secondly, entrepreneurship. We want to we want to ingrain that in them by the time they're twelve or thirteen. If I were to invest in something like this, would I have any say so in that, or or would, is that something that we would have to develop ourselves? You know, and if and if we can't do that, that's fine. But I want to know if, if, if there's any way that we can inject that in there and if we needed to pay for it or whatever, could we do that? Yes, you could. What, what we do is we work with, you know, our clients. We don't just say oh, okay. it's this way this, and this way. So, okay. of course, we want your input. We want to know, you know, exactly what it is you want, what you want okay. to do. And okay. Another thing I want to add, we don't just do real estate. You know, like say, for example, if right. somebody has an idea to start a, a farm or something like that, we can help you with that. Or if you have okay. a tech business you want to start in Africa. Okay. Any type of business you, you're interested in, in starting in Africa, yeah. we can get you uh, to the right people that you need to, to contact, to talk to. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. So don't just think we just do real estate. We can also help you, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, yeah. if you want a computer company. You know, okay. Help you with that. Okay. So, so, okay. So what would be the first step? So somebody comes to me and say, Jimmy, listen, I heard what the young man said. I heard what the guy said. Where do I start? Would you need an executive summary, business plan, and all of that? Uh, what, or, or, you know, what do you need from them to at least take a look at what they're talking about? What would you need from them? The main thing is just for them to either write or tell me mm -hmm. what it is they're trying to do in Africa. Like I said, the, the sky's the limit in Africa. It's all types of businesses you can start. Okay. It's all kinds of things. I just do real estate because, you know, that's what I've been doing for like the last 15 years. Wow. So, but wow. you can do like, hey, any type of business you want to, you can do it in Africa. But like that's I said, fantastic. they the exact same things over there. Mm -hmm. that we have over here, but we just never see those things. Yeah, we just never see them, exactly. And that's why I keep telling exactly. people, open your mind, you know, and I, I always tell people to work your mind or you're going to work your behind. If you don't open your mind, you're still going to work your behind because you're going to be limited and your thinking, limited thinking is going to give you limited ideas. Limited ideas is going to limit your vision. And you'll be stuck. You'll be stuck. You can't receive what he's saying, you know, and, and it's going to be really, really hard for you. And, and, and anybody who's been, who's been following me for so, any length of time know as a visionary, I always teach you to expand your thinking, mastering yourself, mastering your mindset. Don't try to master anybody else or business deal. Master you, you know what I mean, by keeping, you know, keep that negative stuff out of your mind. Don't sit there and watch television all day. I call it the hell of vision. Now, is there some good things on TV? Yes. You know, I watch, but I'm just saying the negative stuff. Don't watch all the conspiracy theories, even though there are some out there. You know, we're, we're talking business. We're talking commerce, you know. I'm, I am an apostle in the marketplace, okay? I want to see as many of you prosper. If you're watching this and you've been watching me for any length of time, you know how I think. We think abundance. We think, we think of, you know, multifamily buildings. You know, we think of, you know, owning beaches because you can, you can buy a beach. There's ways to do that. Tyler Perry and Oprah Riffey, they own a beach. But they, they shouldn't be the only ones. But you, but, you know, you're only limited to what's going on up here. And this man is saying, if you have any kind of idea, tech idea, you know, any kind of startup, any kind of vision the Most High gave you, and you can put it on paper and you know what you want. I always talk to you guys about Habakkuk chapter two. Write the vision, make it plain. Make the vision plain. It may tarry, but it will come. So in other words, there's work involved with vision. 
But uh, don't come to us with something, you know, with an idea in your head. It, you need to write it down. You know what I mean? I always tell you, I hope you guys were taking notes today, okay? And then, and then you go ahead and you, you put it on a spreadsheet or whatever. We'll call a meeting and I'll, I'll have him come, you know, see what you have. And he, and he has connections. But don't be afraid to do these things that we're talking about. All right? Last but not least, I'm going to talk about something very critical. And, and I'm going to... Yes. yes. Sure, go ahead. You're going to say something? I thought you said something. Uh, did I know you? my phone. Okay. Wait, can you give me a second? Sure. Uh, somebody was trying to call me. No problem. No problem. I'm, try I'm trying to set up something anyway here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, give me just a second. Take your time. And while he's doing that, guys, I'm just going to go over uh, something I, I, I didn't read before about the properties. Uh, properties in gated communities. Um, they're sitting, uh, houses are sitting on between 40, uh, on 40 by 80. Uh, that's 206 square meters. Uh, master bed, master in suit bed, bedroom, spacious lounge and kitchen pantry, large windows or natural lighting. Use a three two, uh, new construction. Some of them, you know, uh, so basically they're brand new. Okay, um, you know, and, and and again, these these are these properties are new. They're not used. All right, fresh water supply. Okay, solar water heating system. Fresh water. <laughs> say, say, that, say that again. Oh, I said free fresh water. Oh gosh, did y'all hear that? <laughs> and, and, and people in my group love to hear that word free because I give away free yeah. vacations. Now as of late, because of the economy, what happened, you know, I gave away like 5,000 vacations in 2019 through, through my, my real estate course because I, I partnered with a company and you know, we, we offer that incentive for, for people who work hard. But uh, because of what happened, you know, the, some people, and even some, some airplane companies, you know, they're filing for bankruptcies. I mean, they just, they just can't, uh, they can't afford it, so so I don't do the free vacations. But but the free water, and the, I'm I'm pretty sure somebody's antennas went up. <laughs> okay, my water bill here in Georgia is not much, but I'm like, man. And the, when I was in the country, I never paid for water. I'm like, why am I paying for it now? <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, exactly. let me just go over this one quick thing. Okay, now. All right, so let's talk about this really really quick. This is this is now I'm shifting gears now more into um, something that's been on my heart heavily especially for the African-American community, and I'm closing, all right? Okay. So everything you heard so far is great information. Retain that information, use it. That's for any investors who want to invest in Africa, no matter where you come from, okay? Again, to my white family, to my Hispanic family, to my, you know, to my Hebrew brothers and every other nation out there, any one of you who want to invest and come to Africa, you're, it's open arms, it's open arms. But now I'm gonna take a moment and talk about the, what I talked, what I said before, what I call, and it's the project that, that I personally, the most high put on my heart to do. It's called the global return of the diaspora. Now my responsibility in that is the African-Americans or the ones that, you know, they call us African-Americans. We are the tribe of Yehudim. Now Yehudim is scattered all over. You have some in South Africa, uh, South America, not South Africa, pardon me, South America. You have them in, uh, you know, Jamaica, Haiti. Uh, you have them, you know, all, some of them are spread out in China. You got, we were the only tribe that was scattered to the four corners of the world of the earth. Okay. So there's a big migration coming back. And I did explain to you before that the, there was a nation in Africa that's according to statistics, I'm going to show it to you in a moment. It's the fastest growing nation in the world. It's under the, under the radar. It grew 66% since 2000 to right now. I'm going to show it to you. You're going to be like, wow. And that country is Nigeria. Okay. They were hundred, they had a hundred something million people back in two, uh, year 2000. They're over 200 million people now. And guys are saying in the next 20 years, it's going to be neck and neck with the U.S. The U.S. is the third most populated country in the world. So that shows you how fast it is. Why are these people, why is all these people migrating back? Well, the migration of, of you know, Israel, the, you know, some of the other 11 tribes are in different parts of Africa. But that area right there, and there's, a, there's an area uh, in, a, in a certain part of Africa below there, it's called Biafra, where the tribes come together. Okay, but, but, but Nigeria, man, it's growing like, it's I didn't know. I didn't know that their biggest city. I think it's Logos, Nigeria. I think over 20 million yeah. people. I, yeah, Lagos. Uh -huh. Lagos. Lagos. Yeah. I, I heard it's over 20 million people. I didn't know that. You know, mm -hmm. we look at we look at New York City. It's only eight million people. You know, but it's the biggest city in this country. We think it's. But like you said, because of all the lies we've been told, uh, Lagos right. is a huge city. You can yeah. fit New York <laughs> inside of Lagos I, a few times, and but I, nobody. I, you tell them that. Right. Right. So, but you meet you and I as as, as black men and as men in general. We have, a, we have a moral obligation to let our people know to wake up. And that's why I started this, this project. 
and it's a $2 trillion project. Now, I'm going to explain it to you, uh, and it's not like, oh, Jimmy's a money grabber. No, no, no. This program is for you. Now, if you look at the federal government, what they just did in the U.S., they just dished out $2 trillion a little bit more to, to pour into, you know, to, to supposedly small businesses and some of the big businesses and the hospitals and all that, okay? But they would never pay reparations for the 400 years of what we just went through. They have the money, but they won't pay it, right? So what we've decided to do, what, what the most high put on my heart, is to show you a way if only 10% of the African-American population decided to take action and buy a property in Africa. Now, I did the numbers on it. You can go Google it. Google the African-American population right now. I honestly believe it's about 10 million or 20 million off because I, I, I don't believe we're still 13% of the population from 1950 no. till now. I don't mean we're, to cut you off, but they've been saying that since 1860. <laughs> Absolutely. We know it's a lot. I can exactly. read the exact same number for, for all those years, you know. Kevin Sanderson, 1960. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and, but, 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 but for time's sake, because I know what people do, they go and they, they'll, because, you know, we, we may not be the, we may not look the, the, the right color, or for whatever reason, they'll come and go Google something and say, they lied. So let's go with, their, let's go with what they said. So I Google it. Yeah. They say we're 42 million people of the population. I think it's more like 60 or 70, close to 100. Yeah. Okay, and if you look, if you look at what's going on with COVID nineteen, that's another whole story. If it's affecting Black people more, they see the one or two things. They're not telling the truth about that, or we're a heavy amount of the population. Okay, now that being said, if you, I'm going to show you the numbers in Africa. Africa has very low numbers with COVID nineteen deaths. It will blow your mind. It's 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 off the charts. But let's stick to this. Let's say ten percent of the the the, the African American population did exactly what we just told you to do. You say, well, I don't have $50,000 to buy a property. I have a game plan for you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, 10% of us, okay, that would be, that would be, I said that wrong. Hold on, 2 trillion. Okay, let me back up. Let me back up. Okay, I said 10%. That's the second, that's the second, that'd be 200 billion. Let's say everyone left, which, which <laughs> Bible prophecy does say that we are going to have a second exodus. Okay, so that's why I'm starting with the 2 trillion. I got ahead of myself there. If that does happen, you're talking 40 million black people leaving out. Guys, they just lynched another black man the other day in broad daylight. This, this, was, this was an attorney, an ex-attorney general, or not, not attorney general, he was like a, he was a city official or an ex-cop who ran down a black man who was jogging in his own neighborhood, him and his son, took out their shotgun, shot him, killed him in broad daylight. They're still trying to, this happened back in February. They're trying to decide if they should persecute, uh, prosecute the guy. Okay, so, so at the 400 years, nothing has changed. So let's say the prophecy comes to pass because we know what the Most High doesn't lie. Okay, if all of us decided to leave, listen to this, that's $2 trillion. But if that's 40 million people, that means 40 million people will have to come up with $50,000 for the property. Now, I know that number is lower than that because all 40 million of us are not adults. So if you really look at it as like a family, let's say the average black family is three people, then you can divide that by three. You, you're talking about maybe a half a trillion dollars would do it, okay? Now, if only 10% of us left, you took it, you're looking at a $200 billion, you know, that's what it would cost. And there, there's, there's so much money in our community, it's insane, all right? If only 1% left, you're looking at 400,000 people. That's $20 billion, all right? I'm gonna give you the, the roadmap of how to do this. Again, according to what he's saying, we gotta, pay, we gotta pay cash, all right? So I'm, gonna, I'm going to use my philosophy, business philosophy, to impart that to you, okay? And take it in the spirit of wisdom to understand that there is a way to borrow the money if you don't have it, okay? And I'm gonna show you the method to do it. But my prayer, my heart, is for the oppression to stop toward our people. And after 400 years, they haven't stopped, according to the Bible, they're not going to. He's going to have to deliver us. So does that mean that we wait for him to do something supernaturally? No, it doesn't mean that. In the meantime, get yourself economically right. Get yourself a passport. Listen to shows like this that talk about real issues that happen in our community. Okay? But here's how you do it. Okay, so if 100% left, that's $50,000 per property. That means you have a property in another country over there somewhere in Africa, right? They have the space for us. Okay? But let's take a look. Let me just show you this really, really quick. And you can do this with my company. I have it set up where we can do it ourselves for you. Or, and it's, and it, you, have to pay to, you have to pay to get this stuff done. It's not cheap. When I say not cheap, 
It's, a, it's affordable, but it's not free. That's, I said that wrong. It's not free. So you guys know me as a funder. I do funding. Uh, I, I brought a big, a big time, an awesome team that helps repair credit. I have a spiritual son who's from Africa who's fantastic at, at repairing credit. One of the best I've ever seen. So there's a couple of things you need to do. So, so I know how to get you funding and get you credit. If you get the credit, you can get the financing. All right, then we can buy the real estate. So step number one, you would need to get, bare minimum, get your, credit, your FICO score up to 650. Not, not the traditional FICO where you get the high score, low score, middle score. I'm talking about, with, with the first one here, it's what we call a tri-merger. That means that all three scores would have to be 650 and above. If you can do that, I have a source that can get you anywhere from twenty to $40,000. Now, that's not the $50,000 yet. This is the first step. Follow me here. I'm going to work. Number two, take the seed money and you buy three LLCs. Why do you buy three LLCs? Because there's something called business financing or business funding, which means that once you build your credit, you get that financing, you get that 20 to 40 K, you turn around, you buy an LLC so you can build your business credit, which is separate from your personal credit. Okay. You build all three of those out. We have a company that does it for you. It's going to take anywhere from six to eight months. It's not overnight. When you do that, you take all three LLCs and you can get each LLC anywhere from bare minimum 50 to 100,000. But on the low end, let's just say 50,000. So if you get three LLCs with the method that I just told you, fix your personal credit, take that seed money, buy yourself three LLCs, okay? Abide by the laws that are governed in your state. First of all, I'm always, I'm gonna always say this to you. Get your passport first. Then pay $50,000 cash for a property. That's the first two steps. Passport, property. Take the rest. If you, get, you, know, if you got three, if you got three LLCs that have $50,000, that's $150,000. So you bought your property, you bought your passport, you're close to $100,000 left. Well, you use that money to help pay some of your debt and, and we can help you diversify to find other programs. You can, you can take some of that money and say, hey, Jimmy, you know, and Ty, listen, I got $50,000 that I borrowed. How can I turn this money into cash flow? This, these are the methods of the rich. That's what they do. They borrow the money, make money on the money. There's good debt and bad debt. Bad debt is when you buy a credit, you get a credit card for two or $3,000 and you go buy Michael Jordan shoes. And you go buy these two, you know, $1,500 $1, rims for your car. That's bad debt. But if you take that $2,000, repair your credit, buy, do these things I'm telling you, and get more income, more seed money, you can begin to own things. Not just for Africa, I'm just saying in general, okay? So, you know, because remember, nothing happens by chance. It happens on purpose. So if everybody did what I just said, it, could, it may take about, it could take anywhere from 18 months to, to two years. It can. But on the low end, it could take up to a year, but you gotta start somewhere. So let's recap. 650 credit score. Some of you are already there. Some of you have a 700. If you have a 700 FICO score and you have two years tax return so you make $50,000 a month or more, we can get you $100,000 just like that. Okay, but this other tri-merger is for people who are not there yet. Take your seed money, buy the LLCs, make sure everything's legit by your state, turn around, hire us, because we, we can do all this, build your business credit. We show you how to get the, the correct trade lines that are going to report on that. Because you can't just go out and get business credit on your own. You can do it on your own, but you got to know which, you got to know which companies are going uh, to allow you to post certain trade lines on that business credit or it doesn't show up. We do all of it in-house. All right. So I'm sure that, you know, you're, 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 you're thinking in your head, this is impossible. I have nothing. Well, some of you got stimulus checks, you know, and do you know in the black community in this country, it, the, the black, the dollar stays in our hands, in our community for about six hours, and then it goes somewhere else. It goes to Nike, okay, it goes to Gucci. I'm not gonna keep going on and on, but in the Chinese community, that, do, that dollar bounces 30 days in their community. The Jewish community, 20 days. In the white community, Caucasians, you know, 17 days. Our community, not even a day. But I'm telling you something, we have to galvanize and, and be you know, because Black Wall Street, if you go back and look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, they had all things in common. They did everything independent. The new Black Wall Street is not an actual physical place anymore right now. Africa is, is becoming that, but it's the internet. It's the access you have to things online. We have to galvanize and work together. Now, 
to all my white brothers and sisters, I hope this doesn't offend you. Listen, you are included too if you want to be a part of this. All I'm saying is don't go trolling and saying, Jimmy, you a racist. No, no, no. If, if loving my people makes me a racist, then you have a serious problem because that's not, that's not the definition of being a racist. I don't have the power to control another group of people economically. So technically, black people cannot be racist. They can't. Not in the U.S. Because we don't economically tr control it. We don't write the laws to, to, to bring in justice to another group of people. And that's how you, that's the definition of what a racist is or a racist society. I can have racial hatred. I can hate somebody because of their skin color, but that's not a racist. Okay. So, so if you hate me for saying, you know what, this is, I'm showing you the vision for our people. It's personal credit, business credit, get yourself $150,000, $200,000, go buy yourself one or two properties. Now, realistically, like we said before, if all 100% left, you, if you break it down in families, you're looking at maybe, you know, it's, it's not going to be 40 million people buying homes. It's probably going to be a third of that because we all have families. Okay. So that's, that's all I wanted to say. Let me go back to the beginning. And, and, and guys, do what you got to do to go back and watch this over and over again. Get it in your spirit. Get an understanding of it. Ask the Ruach HaKadosh, which, is the, which the Christians call the Holy Ghost, okay, the breath of God, holy breath of God, to show you and reveal to you, give you wisdom and understanding of what you just read, what you just heard, and what you just saw. This is, this is to inspire you. This is to motivate you. This is to push you. Uh, as a leader, I cannot stand by any longer, because I because I've done it for a while, and not speak against the oppression against our people. I cannot do that. I have to say something. I have a spiritual daughter and and, and uh, a student, a white student of mine. I, I love her. I've been with I've been knowing this girl for a long, long time. And me and her had a big vicious argument, you know, because something was said online where a post got out there, and I responded to the post, and uh, you know, I said some things. She said some things. And I called her back. I said I apologize, but one thing I don't apologize for. I'm unapologetically and proud to be a black man, and I'm, I'm proud to stand up for, for, the, for the rights of African-American people, not just us, all people, but particularly us. I said, you're not black, so you don't know what it's like to be me. I'm not white, so I don't know, I don't know what it's like to be white. But when I hear people say that God doesn't see color, that's a big lie, and that they don't see color, another big lie. Number one, God made all of us different. He made 2,700 variations of skin tone. Okay, so if he didn't see color, then he would be colorblind, so we'd all be stale. So he loves color. And for a person to say they don't see color, that is, that is the actual, that is, that is the, the underlying uh, problem with white supremacy. It's denial. I've heard pastors say God doesn't see color, and they don't see color. Lie, lie. And there's nothing wrong with it. Color was, look, look, look at Africa. Look how beautiful this is. You're not going to see this on CNN. You're not going to see it on Fox News. Okay, we love you guys. Um, that's basically all I have to say. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to put all of his information there. You can, you can contact him um, and you can reach out to him and say, hey, I saw Jimmy's show. I want to talk to you about some property. I want to talk to you about investing. You know, what can I do? I have some of you probably got your 401k. You know, some of you are ready. I have, I have, I have had one lady yesterday. She, she had a 770 FICO. She's trying to buy a church somewhere in Fort Lauderdale, you know, so we're trying to get her some seed money for the down payment and her retirement money, you know, her IR, and I would never say her name, but her IRA, it's, it's like over a half a million dollars. Okay. So some of you got it right now. You need to activate it. The reason I'm saying that is because of the tension and the panic that's going on. Uh, the hatred is still out there. Okay. You don't put your, don't put your trust in, in the government, uh, the Democrats or the Republicans. The, the Democrats created the KKK. <laughs> the Republicans just show you who they are up front. Both of them enslaved us. Both of them did. Okay, so I don't trust any of the government. I don't trust any of that. What I stick with is, uh, what I do is I trust that Bible that I read because it's about us. It talks about our history. And I try to, 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 to go and get true information, not conspiracy theory. I get facts. I told y'all I was going to show you all this and I'm going to show it to you right now so you can see it for yourself about Nigeria, okay? Uh, this is a video that I did a while back, all right? I can find it, here it is. Take a look here. <clears throat> top 10 countries with the highest population, all right? China's at the top, 1.4 billion. India's behind, United States is number three, 
Nigeria is number seven with 206 million people. Here is where they outgrew everyone. Look over here. They grew 66% since 2000. Who's behind them? Indonesia is behind them. Now, here's the projections for 2050. They're, they're projected to be at 391 million people. The U.S. is going to be at 398. They're virtually going to be about equal. As far as, what does that mean? There's a big migration going back. This is real. This is, this, is, this is facts, okay? I didn't make this up. Go look this up yourself. You want to find out where I got it from, go to internetworldstats.com forward slash uh, stats8.htm. That's where I got it from. Go look that up. One other thing I want to show you guys is this right here, this whole thing with the coronavirus. These are real numbers, okay? Go look this up, okay? And this is what disturbed me when they kept saying, you know, that, that, that people of color in this country are, are the face of this whole pandemic. Well, that's just in this country. And I told you one or two reasons why we're more of the population than they're saying or something's happening to us that they're not telling, okay? Why we're dying in record numbers because in other parts of Africa, the numbers are low. Look at this. <clears throat> we're closing. Okay, so all over the world right now, okay, if you look up top here, and I'm gonna speak a prophetic language to Hebrews, okay? If you see the top few countries here, they are the countries of Edom or Esau, okay? The 12 tribes of, of Israel or Jacob, that would be us, that'd be the scattered tribes, a lot of the tribes in, in Africa, all right? We're not at the top of the pandemic. It's the US, Spain, Italy. Look at, look at these numbers. Look at this. Russia. Look at this. And I'm going to show you where you're going to start seeing black nations. Look at this, the Netherlands. I'm going down. Now, these are the, these are the total deaths right here, okay? Sweden, mm -hmm. Ireland, Singapore, Israel, Australia, Japan. Now, look at the low numbers in Japan. Well, guys, look at that. But let's keep going here. Dominican Republic, Colombia, mm -hmm. South Africa. Look at this. Now, just to get, put this in perspective, South Africa has 57 million people in it. Italy has... 60 million people in it. Italy has over 25,000 deaths. South Africa has 161. Let's keep going here. Egypt, look at this. These are the raw numbers here, right here. Okay, I'm not gonna stay on this, but I just want you to see it for yourself. Cameroon, 108 deaths. Okay, now, now, now. A certain woman, and you guys know who this is, Bill Gates' wife, Melinda Gates, said she, she saw dead bodies. She said she, she said she saw dead bodies all over Africa from COVID-19. I'm trying to figure out where. <laughs> Ivory Coast, 18 deaths. <laughs> Show me where. I want to see this. Sudan, 52 deaths. Okay, Sri Lanka. Look, 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 guys. And I'm not, trying to make, I'm not trying to make it about a race thing, but it is a nation thing. The Bible says that the, in the end times, nation shall rise against nation. Let me make it simple for you. It's Israel or the 12 tribes of Jacob against Edom. If you want to know about Edom, if you're a spiritual person, go read Obadiah chapter one. It talks about who they are and what they would do in the end times, how they would, you know, how they would go ahead and kill and destroy or go around the earth and take things by force. And they would be the leaders at the end. Well, they took a certain book out of the Bible. It's called the book of Esdras. And it says, at the end of the world is Esau. And the world that comes after that is Jacob. Well, what you're seeing now with the Western world, what's happening, it's falling. Look at Kenya, guys. Kenya has millions of people, but they only have 29 deaths. Okay? Tanzania, 16 deaths. Jamaica, nine deaths. So, so there's a transfer of power that's going on. And so that's why I had to end it this way to let you know this is spiritual. The Congo, that's going up a little further. What I'm saying is, all these, look, look at Rwanda. Guys, zero deaths. Rwanda. Where, where, where is, I want to know where she's getting this data from, that there's, de there's deaths over here, okay? But, but what I'm saying to you, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fight going on right now. And we as Hebrews have to unite. Don't wait on the government to do nothing for you. Because when I saw that, that young man, 25 years old, had his whole life ahead of him, jogging in his own white neighborhood. It was a white neighborhood but it was still his because he lived there. But white people thought that he was, you know, they treated him worse than they treated a dog. They thought they had the right to stop him in the middle of the road and kill him. 
Zambia, let's, let's go on up a little bit more here. Let's look at this. Zambia, look, look at this. I can go on and on. You want to find out where I found this? Go to worldmeters.info uh, forward slash coronavirus countries. I'm going to, I'm going to, when I, when I post this, my brother, I'm going to send you all this so you have it. But I'm going to put links so you guys can see this, these statistics. It's shocking. But don't wait for a system to take care of you. Yahuwah, that's his real name, Yahuwah, is coming back to judge what happened. But in the meantime, you need to be proactive. Get your passport, repair your credit, buy your property, okay? Now, to the investor that wants to stay out of Africa and buy, you can do this, you can, you can buy your property and do your thing. But I'm speaking a spiritual thing now to African-American people or the Hebrew people, all right? That's all I have to say. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure to have you, my brother. Uh, do you have any final statements to that? Because, again, I, I went preach mode then, but I honestly felt I needed to. <laughs> all right, but do you have any? Say it again. No, I say I understand, but uh, yeah, like I said, just don't, like you were saying, don't believe everything you see on TV because they're not going to show you nothing positive about Africa. Right. As a matter of fact, when I came uh, back from Africa and I showed my friends uh, the videos that I personally took, they didn't yeah. want to believe that they've been lied to for so much, you know, for so long and so much. Absolutely. The pictures, they're like, well, where is that at? I said, oh, well, that was from my vacation in Africa. That's Africa? You know, they, they don't believe because they've never seen nice pictures from Africa. They only seen the negative stuff. So oh, yeah. definitely you know, check out the website, look at mm -hmm. the uh, different investments. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just take it from there. That's fantastic, man. I appreciate you saying that because, again, you know, if, uh, for some reason, and again, it goes back to, to how this, the country was established. When we say something, we're angry people. Well, well, I think, I think being oppressed for 400 years is the reason to be angry, okay? But, but, but we have to control that anger. We can't go around killing and acting crazy. We have to be strategic and, and set ourselves up economically because of the lies. And believe it or not, my dear brother, there's a lot of people that are in some of my other groups. You know, we work together, we talk, and we understand that we've been lied to. Our 400-year oppression is over. It happened last, 2019. You know, 1619 was the first year they brought us over here. The prophecy of us staying 40 years is up. That has to be lifted. So that means there's a spiritual awakening and a physical awakening because some of us have literally just sleeping our lives away. And, uh, and, and to keep listening to the media, that's on you. I tell people, you can listen to what you want, but it's brainwashing. What I'm telling you here, you're not going to see it on the news. You, you, you're listening to a, a, a man who went there, lived there, bought property there, took real pictures there. This is serious. Okay? And, and again, Think for yourself. Be a critical thinker. Don't let people think for you. Don't let these Democrats tell you they're going to do all this. And No. Republicans, no. I'm not telling you to be against them. I'm saying open your mindset and be someone who, who can think for yourself. Okay? Because, you know, we got to do something. If they haven't, if they, if they haven't repented and say, you know, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to stop. Because repentance doesn't mean to say you're sorry. It's to say, you know what, let's stop killing these men. Let's shoot them in the leg. You know, he, he may, don't shoot him in the chest. They're deliberately killing our people. I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? And then, and then we don't, we never get to see what you're seeing. These are real cities. They're thriving cities. All right. Let's make it happen. To, again, to all of you out there who've been watching my show, this was in no way to, to uh, discriminate and say, we know we're trying to leave a certain group out. We're not like that. We're just telling the cold, unadulterated truth which you're not gonna hear on CNN or Fox, okay? In fact, when that day does come according to the Bible, when Israel is back in the land, there's, and, and, and that little Israel that, you see, that they show you in the Middle East, I think Israel is much bigger than that. But when we all come together, it says the stranger comes with us. That means the other nations, whether you're black or, you know, because all black people are not Israel, okay? All of them are not. Or, or whether you're white or whether you're Chinese or whatever, they, you guys are going to be with us. There's going to be a remnant that's going to come back with us. But you got to come back with the right spirit. You know what I mean? He's going to come back and he's going to avenge the blood of his people. Christianity likes to say he's going to come back and avenge the Christians. No. Yes, people who believe in Yahushua Mashiach, I believe they will be saved. But this judgment we're talking about is for all the lies and the slavery. And, you know, over 100 million of us jumped off the boat on the way over here. We don't know how many people really died. That blood's still crying out. There's a law that's in the earth realm that never goes away. The Bible, it's in Genesis. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest time. 
Genesis, uh, Galatians chapter 6, Paul said it this way. God is not mocked. Yahuwah is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. I just gave you a, a roadmap and a plan so we can help you get out of this situation if you want to get out of it. And for anyone else who are not a, you're not a Hebrew, you want to invest, we don't discriminate. <laughs> we just, okay, give, him, give us a call and we'll work it out. I'm going to put his entire bio and his information up there. And I want to see you guys do something different. Okay. Some of you already own property. Some of you, I know you personally, you have multifamily properties in Vegas and all these other places. Consider Africa. Okay. Some of you got half a million dollars in the bank. Consider Africa. We'll make it worth your while. Okay. We have real attorneys, property appraiser. We got real, you know, you're going to fly over there. You're going to see it happen. It's not just talk. And we want you to join forces with us. All right. And with that being said, my brother, I really do appreciate you being on the show. Um, very informative. You know, you're an intelligent man. You're, you're a brilliant man. Okay. And, and it takes guts and it takes um, tenacity and character. Okay. And fortitude to come out and say the things you said. You're not speaking against the country. You're just exposing it. The lies that we've been told. And most men won't do that. They'll sit back and say, it's okay. And, you know, because we've been taught, oh, let's just be okay. That we're in the NFL, we're, we're in the NBA, we're making millions, and they think that's it. No, no, no. Most of us are not in the NBA. 99% are not in the NBA. You know, we're living this other life, like that other 25-year-old man who just died, like Trayvon Martin, and, you know, you know all the other names. I don't want to say them, Castile and all these. That's the real world here in this country. This, this could be a way out for a lot of us, for all of us, really. Let's make it happen. Again, to the other average investor, do what you got to do. All praises to the most high for all of you. Uh, Ty, I always like to say this at the end of my show, okay? And I say it to just as I always say, I'll see you at the top. Will you say that with me to my audience? We'll see you at the top. Okay. All right. My brother, have a great day, and I'll see you soon. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Thank you very much. You got it. Bye-bye.